Welcome to Networks Tech Talk. I'm your host, Kaylee Pickens, and we have another great conversation for you today. When emergencies arise, I think we can all agree that we'd like people responding not only to be well-trained and experienced, but have access to all the information they need in real time. First responders such as police and firefighters need to be able to communicate with each other and with medical personnel without delay, as interruptions can result in property damage, injuries, and sometimes fatalities. With me today is Alex Chin, a staff engineer for the networks business at Samsung Electronics America. He's going to help us understand how improvements in mission critical communications can help facilitate this. Welcome, Alex. Um, Hi, Kaylee. Thanks for having me today. Of course. Can you tell us more about what exactly are mission critical communications? Uh, Sure. So mission critical communications supports public protection and disaster relief management. So think about the first responders, such as the police, firefighters, and emergency medical technicians. You know, they need to communicate quickly, reliably, and securely in case of an emergency or disaster. So these people put their lives on the line for all of us you know, all the time. And having mission critical push to anything or MCPTX technologies that can run on ubiquitous cellular wireless network is a one way to make their jobs easier. That's interesting. You mentioned this term mission critical push to anything, which sounds like it plays a really big role in these emergency communications. Can you tell us more about exactly what that is? Yeah. um, So mission critical push to anything is an upgrade of the mission critical push to talk, which, as its name suggests, is basically a walkie talkie network that allows people to use their voices to communicate. The new push to anything expands on that allowing not only voice to be shared, but text, images, and video. Interesting. Being able to communicate with these different elements sounds really helpful, but it begs the question, how are first responders actually communicating today? So today, uh, most first responders around the world use what's called a uh, land mobile radio system. This also called LMR, uh, which is basically a walkie-talkie system, but That LMR is somewhat limited as it supports voice and very limited uh, numeric messaging functions only. Yeah, it sounds like it may be very limiting the way that first responders are currently communicating. Uh, Yes, definitely. Actually, other shortcoming of the current system is the inability to communicate with the neighboring systems. Often they are not interoperable due to different technologies being used. So can you imagine uh, difficulties when, let's say, a tornado touches down in several cities or counties and the authorities are trying to manage a unified rescue plan without having this seamless interoperable communication? Yeah, I can really see the issues with this. Um, Will the new mission critical push to anything be different? Yes, it will be very different with uh, so much more capabilities. It will support not only voice, but also text, images, location mapping, and video. And all this is done in real time. It can also support communications for both day-to-day and emergency operations as well. It sounds like it's a huge upgrade from what's available now. It is indeed. The new system can do messaging and file distribution. It can do live streaming, and it can also do group and private video calls. One of the function is the dynamic group management, and you can use that function to actually dynamically create a talk group, such as based on a member's location. Another function is that the dispatcher and first responders, they can push video and image to provide the member group where, think of a situation like if you're a firefighter and you're responding to a raging fire in a building that you you receive a blueprint of the building and the video of what's happening inside of the building before you're heading in. Wow, it sounds like it can really be truly um, life-saving technology. So what does this new push to anything system mean for the way communications are handled now? So that has always been an important consideration So to the MCX user community, this means that they can take advantage of the MCX's seamless advanced capabilities alongside their existing solution uh, without having to rush into replacing legacy systems. That makes sense. Now that we've talked about how the new mission critical push to anything will help first responders in public safety, do you think that this technology will be used for anything else? Uh, Yes. So the initial focus of a mission critical service is for public safety. But besides handling emergency communication for the first responders and the military, 
It can also apply to existing maritime aviation, such as airport and the baggage handlers and railway networks. So there is also significant interest in deploying MCX-based services for other vertical industries that requires critical communications with the stringent requirements. Yeah, it sounds like critical communications really requires that strong connection. So with that in mind, do you think 5G will play a role in mission critical services? Uh, yes, good question. So current mission critical push to anything service are based on 4G. However, there is a definitely interest in enhancing the existing services with the 5G capabilities, such as enhanced mobile broadband and ultra low latency capability. Uh, those can bring crucial benefits for mission critical services, and Samsung and the standard bodies are working to support their commercial use in the next few years. So you've mentioned Samsung a couple of times. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the exact role that Samsung's playing in the development of these new technologies? Mm -hmm, sure. So for years, Samsung has been at the forefront of working with the standard bodies and collaborating with them to develop the global mission critical services standards. And these standards include push to anything. Uh, it can be a device to device communication, which allows device to find other nearby devices and directly communicate with each other without having the network. Lastly, there is an evolved multimedia broadcast multicast services that delivers common data to an entire group simultaneously, such as like doing a broadcast. And our mission critical services products are developed in full compliance of these standards. And we have been actually been quite busy supporting commercial rollout of these services. Um, one example is that the last year, we helped to expand a nationwide public safety network in Korea. And in the US, uh, Samsung has partnered with AT&T to implement the FirstNet. FirstNet is a dedicated and highly secure non-public platform for public safety operating in the 700 megahertz band. Sounds like Samsung has a lot of history and is playing a big role. Yeah, absolutely. So, Samsung indeed has a true end-to-end -end public safety mission critical solutions. Um, our products include network equipment, devices, dispatcher, LMR interrupt gateway, and applications for mission critical network. And I would also like to highlight that we offer 14 different FirstNet capable devices that are ultra rugged and capable of a voice, video, and texting. This all sounds very exciting and it sounds like it'll really help emergency communications in the future. Alex, thanks again for sharing with our listeners how mission-critical communications are changing for the better. Of course. Thanks for having me, Kaylee. And to our audience, thank you for participating in today's podcast, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Networks Tech Talk.